right. To get to this point was not so easy. Uh, the sump is now removed and there's a lot of bolts and it's just a lot of fiddling to get them all out. You don't know if you can quite see from where you are there, but I didn't remove any cross members or anything underneath. Just use lots of different universal joints extensions and things. You can do it with a normal tool set. You just gotta have a bit of patience, that's all. So the sump is out. I must point out as well, if you, if you, anyone was doing this, you have to remove the, um, the oil level sensor uh, because it has a stick that sticks up here and it won't clear uh, the oil pump assembly. So anyway, we're at this point now and we can see our chain. So here is our oil pump chain connected to the crankshaft. And then we've got our uh, chain here, Tommy chain that goes up to the high pressure fuel pump, which is the sprocket right at the top. And then disappearing off into the abyss up here is where the camshaft um, sprocket would be. Uh, obviously the cylinder head isn't even attached, so we've just got a loose guide rail that's there at the moment. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go, it's landed straight on me. That there, it just sits on a pin by the way, just there. So uh, it does just slide off. First task is to remove this bottom pulley right here, which is the oil pump pulley. Um, this should have a bit of slack, by the way. I haven't really measured this to see if it's uh, about right or not, but uh, it should have a bit of slack on it. This is a reverse thread on this pulley here. And it has to come off first because it's the furthest forward chain. The other chain sits behind it. And then um, once this chain is off, then we can take the tension off this next uh, chain with that tensioner there. We take the tension off, lock it off, and remove that tensioner. Then we can remove that guide and that guide. And then we can use the special tool on the top pulley uh, to first of all undo it and then force it out and remove it. And uh, then it's just a case of uh, timing the, uh, the, the pulleys correctly and um, refitting the chains. Now the top chain obviously can't go on, or it can go on, but it can't be timed up properly. We shall do that when the cylinder head is installed afterwards. But um, it pays to have the work instructions. So these are my BMW uh, guides. I should be following that and then uh, off we go. Okay, oil pump pulley I've just opened. Oops, remember it's reverse thread. So you sort of do it up to unloosen it, if that makes any sense. Turn it clockwise to loosen it, basically. This is gonna drip oil on me, I might just move slightly. There we go. And there is our oil pump chain. Okay. okay, these two bolts are in, by the way, so I could some leverage. You're supposed to have a special tool that bolts under here, but I don't have the special tool, so a couple of bolts and a bit of leverage is all you need, really. Right, looking further up then, let's go and tension, take the tension off that tensioner and get the guide rails removed. I mean, I'm not sure how loose it's supposed to be when it's not got the tension on it, but it certainly feels looser than I would like it anyway. Right, uh, what have we got to do? I've got to get this pulley off up here, haven't we? So here's the high pressure fuel pump pulley. Here's the special tool that I uh, inserted into that thread. The idea then is that that's inserted and attached and there's a collar on the inside. So as you undo the actual bolt, in the normal fashion, it's a normal bolt, so undo it with an anti-clockwise direction. As that undoes, it will push against this tool and pull the pulley out. And that's the idea to uh, release it from its taper and push the pulley out. So uh, we'll see that hopefully as I uh, begin trying to um, undo. Right, so on the uh, high pressure pulley now, we've reached, uh, the bolt's reached the special tool. So I'm gonna continue undoing it and uh, it should. Oh yeah, I need to stop the uh, crank from turning. Okay, I'm gonna need two hands. So let's just say I'm gonna uh, pull this until it pulls the pulley off, uh, back in a sec. And 
I, he I heard it go, so it should come now. Oh, there we go. Easy peasy. That tool's actually real good. Okay, something else you need to do is uh, take all of your chains, which come in boxes in your kit, and you should soak them in engine oil for uh, a while before installing them. Okay, at this point I've got this guide rail attached, this guide rail attached, and I've bolted the new tensioner back in place. I don't know if you can see, he's there with a little pin holding the tensioner in, so that there's no tension on the chain just yet. And I've just dangling a little chain here to let the oil drip off it. This is now gonna go around the crankshaft, and I'm gonna attach the oil pump sprocket and then that is this chain that chain done and then just uh, sort of tidying up and uh, fixing the gasket on the inside of here scraping off the old gasket all the stuff that's boring and we hate doing and then the work is going to be back up on the top side for the final chain that has to run around that sprocket and up to the, uh, the sprocket that sits on the end of the camshafts which isn't there yet so we need to sort of uh, find a way to tie that up there so that it sits on this sprocket until we're ready to, to attach it, which will be a while. So uh, yeah, a bit of a funny way of doing it, but it's just the way things have panned out. Right, so let's get this on, get the bottom end done, and then we can uh, start reassembling and cleaning all these gaskets off. And uh, this is a liquid gasket, by the way, that you have to reapply. So you can see all the remnants of uh, silicon that's uh, just running here and here. So we'll scrape all that off, clean the joints up and degrease it. Right, now our shiny new oil pump chain is on there. Now it's time to just turn our attention to the edges because we're gonna wanna start sealing back up again. So I'm gonna have to scrape all of this uh, sealant off and then clean up the surfaces. And then the same on the underside here, which is gonna be a little more tricky uh, on the sump, but it's gotta be done. So off we go. It helps to have a little one of these razor blade cleaning tools, or just a razor blade, uh, because it makes taking the gasket off so much easier. Uh, you just need to be real careful because of course this is an aluminium block and you're using uh, hardened steel blade against it. Uh, you know, you can just, I'm just saying these are mating faces where you uh, don't really want to cause lots of damage, uh, so just be get careful and don't cut your finger off at the same time. So yeah, not to forget the very tedious part of jobs like this is cleaning up uh, gaskets and mating faces and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, plenty of uh, cleaning roll and stuff like that. This is just going to get one more wipe over with, uh, I'm using a little bit of brake cleaner to just leave no residue on the surfaces and then I'll do the same on the uh, faces for the sump and for the timing cover and then start putting things like this gasket uh, back on. I think I've got my stupid head on today. I, I can't understand why I need two things to make the timing case gasket seal. It didn't have one of these uh, on, by the way. Let me just turn the camera and I'll show you. So in my timing chain kit comes this very flimsy foil, like thick foil um, case that has a channel, which I presume is supposed to run um, a liquid gasket to maker in. And it sits perfectly over, you know, where, um, where the edge of the casing is. Um, the casing didn't have one of these on when I just took it off now. I presume is it's supposed to make my life easier so that I just run the, um, the high temp silicon in that channel and then just stick it on. You locate it with these holes here so it sort of stays in place and then drop the case straight on top of it and then that squishes the uh, the metal and the silicon bead flat. I don't know, I'm just struggling to understand but I think that's what I'm probably just gonna do. Um, there's your silicon. Um, just make sure you get high temperature stuff because it'll get pretty warm down there. Uh, anyway, let's just do it. I'm fed up with thinking about it now.
Right, well, that was a bit of fun. So the liquid gasket went on to the black thing, the black thing went on and then a little bit of liquid gasket went on to the actual uh, timing case cover, whatever it is. And that's gone on and I've uh, bolted them all up just to sort of a, a pretty hand tight um, torque at the moment. And I'll get the torque specs and torque them up in a little bit. Um, not looking forward to uh, doing the sump now. Although you can see from there, I've cleaned it all up. So uh, all the mating faces are nice and clean and ready for a, a bit of liquid gasket. Oh, joy. Let's get it on. Okay, now just to explain, the timing chain job is not completely finished yet, just because of the haphazard way that I've had to go about doing this job. Because the car was lifted up on air and the cylinder head wasn't finished in time, obviously there's no head on the engine, which means that the final sprocket at the very top of the engine attached to the back of the camshafts can't be timed up and, and attached. So the chain is gonna be hung out the top of the engine awaiting the, uh, the head to go on and the rest of it's all going to be sealed up and, and done so that's that and uh, once the car is back on the deck then we can get the head torqued up and uh, bolted back in place fit the camshafts and the final sprocket and i'll show you that point when i get to it it's crucial to get that right else the whole thing's a waste of time if you pardon the pun and uh, and all the rest of the work putting the engine back together God, I hope I can remember where all the bits go.